It's that time of the year. Your vacation is coming up. You can already hear the beach waves, feel the warm breeze, relax, and think about work. You really, really want it all to work out while you're away. Monday.com gives you and the team that peace of mind. When all work is on one platform and everyone's in sync, things just flow. Wherever you are, tap the banner to go to Monday.com. Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. With the price of just about everything going up during inflation, we thought we'd bring our prices down. So to help us, we brought in a reverse auctioneer, which is apparently a thing. Mint Mobile Unlimited Premium Wireless. Ready to get 30, 30, ready to get 30, ready to get 20, 20, 20, ready to get 20, 20, ready to get 15, 15, 15, 15, just 15 bucks a month. So give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 up front for three months plus taxes and fees. Promote for new customers for limited time. Unlimited more than 40 gigabytes per month. Slows. Full terms at mintmobile.com. Was it nature that turned on him in the excruciating heat of the Nevada desert? Or was it something less natural? Not far from Area 51, anything was possible. It could have been that he encountered an extraterrestrial life form, or something more evil, possibly agents working for a secret organization, or our own government. On a hike that he had done many times before, a YouTuber discovers a strange cave that he claims made his body vibrate. In fear for his safety, he flees, only to return later after followers of his channel insist that he return. Returning alone to search for this mysterious cave proved to be a bad idea. He never made it back, and to this day, he has never been seen again. Welcome to Freaky Folklore the podcast where we discover the horrifying legends across the world and tell terrifying tales of monsters both ancient and modern. Today we are discussing the vanishing of Kenny Veach, YouTuber and avid hiker. Did an accident take his life, or was it something more sinister? This show is part of the EerieCast Podcast Network. Find more terrifying tales at EerieCast.com and be sure to follow us on Spotify or your favorite podcasting service. You can leave an honest review on iTunes, too. The more we get, the more we grow, and hopefully, the more monsters we can explore. If you would like to submit an encounter or suggestions for future episodes, you can email them to carmencarrion at gmail.com. That is C-A-R-M-A-N-C-A-R-R-I-O-N at gmail.com. You can also follow me on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook for information on future episodes. Content warning. This episode discusses suicidal feelings. If you or anyone you know are experiencing difficult thoughts, call 1-800-273-8255 or 911. The palm tree scratching on the glass was annoying enough. But when the bright sun shot through the window, it hit Liam right in the face. Groaning, he shoved a pillow over his head and rolled over. Who plants a palm tree that close to a window anyway, he thought. The jet lag was intense after a 10-hour flight from Seattle and two layovers. The last thing he wanted to do was get out of bed and face the day. He was excited about the quest he was on, but right now he just needed to sleep. Luckily, Liam had no one to answer to. This was his trip, and as usual, he was flying solo. He had booked the room for two weeks, and he could start whenever he was ready, and he would be ready when he was good and rested. Liam didn't have an employer to answer to. He had an extreme hiking blog that made a little money and allowed him to make his own hours. He really didn't have to work. His grandfather left him a trust fund large enough to live off of for the rest of his life, but that's a different story. A couple of weeks ago, Liam had stumbled onto the story of a missing YouTuber who had happened to be an avid hiker. What intrigued him was not that an experienced hiker had gone missing, but what he had found beforehand during a previous hike. He claimed to have found a cave in the shape of an M that caused a weird vibrating sensation all over his body when he entered it. The experience shook the man so badly 
that he took off without exploring further. After posting his story online, he was urged by others online to go back and record the cave. So eventually, he did go look for the cave, a couple of times, but he failed to find it. On his last hike in search for the cave, he vanished. Liam wanted to find that cave, not to record it or make money off the discovery, not even to find the missing man. He wanted to find the cave because from the first time he heard about it, he felt as if it was calling to him in some way. It reminded him of an experience that he had himself some years earlier while hiking in Montana. He had been exploring caves with a buddy when the guy fell to the ground during a seizure. He had no medical issues, so the incident baffled the doctors. His friend later told him he had felt like a bolt of electricity had shot through his body. That was the last time he had ever joined Liam on a hike. He had become more of a homebody and said he had lost interest in outdoor adventures. Liam tottered out of bed, grabbed the room darkening curtain and shut the sun out. After a quick trip to the bathroom, he cranked up the AC and climbed back into bed, making a cocoon out of the blankets. Hours later, Liam finally woke feeling rested. He looked at the bright red numbers on the clock next to the bed. It was 2.30 in the afternoon. He still had plenty of time to purchase supplies for the hike. After a good stretch to loosen his stiff muscles, he bounced out of bed feeling like a new man. He was now ready to face the Las Vegas Strip and navigate his way through throngs of people. He hadn't planned this trip to hit the casinos, but this was his first time in Las Vegas, and he wanted to check out things before he hit the trail tomorrow. He might even play a few games if he was feeling lucky. Liam didn't stay out too late. He wanted to get an early start before the desert heat made the hike too miserable. He had packed his gear the night before, so all he had to do was throw on his clothes, brush his teeth, and grab his pack and go. The early morning air was surprisingly cool, and he found himself wishing he had taken the top off of the rented Jeep. It was still dark out, and he could see the lights of the city fading behind him as he headed out to the desert. It had been a real stroke of luck when he had found a detective that had helped on the case of the missing YouTuber. Otherwise, he may have never known where to start. The Mojave Desert was vast, so when the detective gave him directions to the exact location, it had saved him a lot of time. He had to travel a way off-road until he finally found his starting point and a safe place to park the Jeep. Not wasting any time, he strapped on his pack, double-checked his water supply, and took off after locking the Jeep. As Liam headed down the trail with his headlamp lighting the way, he could see the sun's rays begin to light up the eastern horizon. Walking all day, Liam only rested to hydrate or to relieve himself. His plan was to walk until just before sunset and then make camp. If all went well, he would be close enough to the cave that he could find it early the next morning. A few hours in, the sun began to show its true strength, and Liam was glad he had been wise enough not to make this hike during the summer. It was spring, and he was already soaked in sweat. By sunset, Liam was exhausted and starving. He found a rock shelf along the trail and set up camp. After several nature bars and some beef jerky, he laid back on his bedroll and tried to sleep. But for the first time that day, he began to feel uneasy. The night was eerily quiet, with only the occasional sounds of creatures scurrying through the dark. Even though he knew he was alone out there, he felt like he was being watched. Maybe it was just a fox or some other animal, but whatever it was, it felt unfriendly. It was a long night, and Liam didn't get much sleep. This episode is sponsored by June's Journey. Attention all mystery lovers. Dive into the captivating world of June's Journey the hidden object game that will awaken your inner detective. Join June Parker on her quest to uncover the shocking truth behind her sister's murder in the glamorous 1920s. I'm a couple of chapters in, and I love unlocking new pieces to the mystery after each hidden item search. 
The beautifully detailed scenes, from New York's finest parlors to the charming sidewalks of Paris, make the experience truly immersive. As you progress, you'll also get to build and customize your very own island estate, complete with stunning gardens and luxurious buildings. Gather compelling evidence, decipher cleverly hidden clues, and unravel the dark secrets of the Parker family. Each twist and turn will keep you on the edge of your seat, eager to crack the case. Cooperate or compete against other players in the detective club, and you'll even get a chance to play in a detective league to test your skills. Are you ready to jump back in time, detectives? Download June's Journey for free today in iOS and Android. What's the easiest choice you can make? Window instead of middle seat? Picking a vendor who sends a great gift basket? Outsourcing business tasks you hate? What about selling with Shopify? Whether you're selling a little or a lot, Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real-life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage, Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell. Wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash try. Go to shopify.com slash try now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash try. People go missing every day, many never to be seen or heard from again. Often there is foul play involved, but sometimes they don't want to be found. Most of these stories are similar and common, but that is not the case for 47-year-old avid long-distance hiker and YouTuber Kenny Veach, who vanished while on a hike on November 10, 2014, in the Mojave Desert just outside of Las Vegas. Let's get to know Kenny Veach a little before we delve into the mystery of his disappearance and the strange circumstances surrounding it. I think it's safe to say that anyone who watches Kenny's videos or his posts on social media can see that he was an intelligent, kind person with friends and family who loved him. Kenny's then-girlfriend Sharon Pilgrim left a long comment on his YouTube channel, and in it she describes Kenny in her own words. Kenny absolutely loved hiking the desert. It was his very, very favorite thing to do. We hiked and camped together all over the Nevada desert, sometimes nine hours in a day. We found many abandoned mining towns, usually referred to as ghost towns by Nevada hikers. We explored many caves and mining shafts. We were always careful how we explored them. But Kenny was a bit more daring than I was. We wore snake guards, sun-protected clothing, used walking sticks, brought enough water, and food for the hiking hours, and had extra water and food in the car. He rarely drank all of his water. We took wonderful pictures of all sorts of things we saw. Rusted cars, old falling down buildings, cemeteries, mines, wild animals, tarantulas, scorpions, trees, cactus, and flowers. Our deserts are beautiful if you have a love for deserts. They are not spooky, scary, but you do have to be careful of the terrain and of course bring enough water and food. We always were excited when we saw desert wildlife, like the bighorn sheep in the video. They are stunningly beautiful to see in person in our own desert. We would stand quietly still to watch them as long as possible. I was so very excited to see the one he filmed in his video. He quit his job a little more than a year before he disappeared. He wanted to see if he could sell his inventions and do what he called cowboy interior design for homes. He bought his first home five years ago and had an amazing ability of decorating in this style. So this is who Kenny was and what he loved to do. He sounds like someone who knew what he was doing and had plenty of experience at it. In one of his videos, he made the comment that he had been hiking in the Nevada desert for more than 20 years. But one trip in particular set off the events that led up to his disappearance. Kenny commented on a YouTube video claiming to have found a cave around Nellis Air Force Base in southern Nevada. He was curious about the cave's abnormal shape. When he investigated further, something frightening began happening to his body. 
This is the comment that Kenny made on that post. This ain't nothing. I am a long distance hiker. One time during one of my hikes out by the Nellis Air Force Base, I found a hidden cave. The entrance to the cave was shaped like a perfect capital M. I always enter every cave I find, but as I began to enter this particular cave, my whole body began to vibrate. The closer I got to the cave entrance, the worse the vibrating became. Suddenly I became very scared and hightailed it out of there. That was one of the strangest things that ever happened to me. Kenny's claim of finding the M cave and his experience while inside it aroused the curiosity, if not the skepticism, of many commentators. The result was that they goaded him until he vowed to return. This is Kenny's reply to the challenge. I solo hike across mountaintops that most people wouldn't dare go. I have been in more caves than I can count. I play with rattlesnakes for fun. But this one particular cave was beyond anything I have ever encountered. Someday I will go back, and I will bring a weapon with me. All I had at the time was a knife and a wrist rocket. It was months later before it happened, but Kenny made good on his word. He returned to the spot where he recalled seeing the M cave. He made a video that shows him looking for the cave, but the trip turned up nothing. Only a month later, Kenny tried again. This time he made the trip without his video camera, but he did take his gun. He planned an overnight hike. Kenny should have been home the next day, but no one saw him or heard from him again. Sharon Pilgrim also describes in her comment on Kenny's YouTube channel what occurred when he did not return. When he did not call me after the third day of being gone, I called missing persons. The search for him was started within a couple of days of my call. Over 30 search and rescue team members searched three different times on foot. One helicopter flyover was done and there was no trace of Kenny or any of his camping things. They found his car in the area I told them it would be in. They did find his cell phone by the mine shaft in the video. The mine shaft was only about a four hour hike from his car. Sharon Pilgrim also talks about Kenny's state of mind at the time, but we will talk about that later on. Police were able to track Kenny back to the location shown in his MK video, where on November 22, 2014, 12 days after his disappearance, they found his cell phone near an old mining shaft. The mining shaft had been featured in his video on October 14th while trying to find the cave. A video camera was sent down the shaft to search, as it was unsafe to descend but there was no sign of Kenny. With searches coming up empty and no sign of him, theories began to form, some of them plausible and others completely unfathomable. Many people think that Kenny may have gotten lost or injured during his hike. He did like to push his physical limits and he mentioned many times that he liked to play with rattlesnakes. Even though Kenny was an experienced hiker, he took huge risks. He deliberately went without basic navigational tools. He believed that maps and compasses were for beginners. Kenny may have become exhausted, dehydrated, and disoriented, and lost his way. He may have collapsed due to a combination of these things. The only hole in this theory is that he was hiking in a very specific area that he was familiar with, and an area that searchers should have been able to find his body, belongings, or even clues. Another possibility is that Kenny was the victim of an animal attack. He may have been bitten by a rattlesnake, but still, there was no sign of this, and again, he had taken his gun for protection. No blood or signs of an attack were found anywhere. Some people believe the whole incident was nothing but an internet hoax. Despite the genuine worries of many people, there were some who were suspicious. One popular theory is that Kenny stumbled upon a dark secret inside the M cave and was silenced before it could be exposed. Many people believe that the cave could be a secret entrance to Area 51. Their reasoning is an explanation for the strange vibrations Kenny felt on his body. They believe this could have been caused by classified military technology. Some even believe that the military may have abducted him, or even worse, for discovering something that he shouldn't have. There is another very strong possibility that was brought to light by Sharon Pilgrim which was part of her post on YouTube. I want you to know that I do not think Kenny had an accident. I believe he committed suicide. 
He battled depression for many years and would not take medication or see a doctor. He quit his job a little more than a year before he disappeared. He wanted to see if he could sell inventions and do what he called cowboy interior design for homes. He was not successful in getting his business going and was running out of money after a year of not working. He no longer wanted to work in a job for someone else, and as his money decreased, he became more and more depressed. He really did not look for another job. In early October, with seeing his depression increase, I said to him, You aren't going to pull a Robin Williams on me, are you? This is when he opened up more about his depression and his thoughts much of his life about suicide. His father committed suicide when Kenny was in his early 20s. When I asked him the question, he answered me with, If I decide to do it, you will be okay because you are good at the law of allowing. He also asked me what I would think of him if he did it. He also said if he decided to do it, no one will ever find me. It would be easy to do something like this in our desert with a number of natural caves and mines. He could hike many miles in a day, so there is no telling where or how far he could have hiked during his three-day, two-night solo hike. Though this is Sharon Pilgrim's opinion, this also has never been confirmed. To lighten the mood a little, I saved this theory for last. An ex-U.S. airman by the name of Charles James Hall wrote a book about his experiences working in the Nevada desert, where he interacted with an alien race known as the Tall Whites. In his book, he describes how the Tall Whites had supposedly entered into an agreement with the U.S. government, where they were given secret underground bases in and around the Mojave Desert. Yes, some people believe that Kenny may have stumbled upon the entrance to a base that belonged to the Tall Whites, and when he returned, they were ready for him. As a result, he may have been abducted or eliminated. Whether you believe in the theories or not, if you decide to go looking for Kenny or just hope to find the MK, take the advice of Sharon Pilgrim as she leaves it in the last part of her post about Kenny. I share this with you for two reasons. First, so that you have more of an understanding of who Kenny was and to bring some peace or understanding to the situation. Secondly, if any of you decide to go out into the desert to look for him or the M cave, be careful and bring enough water and food. Walking sticks are a good idea and not doing a solo hike. Bring a GPS and make sure that you have let your family and friends know that you are heading out for the hike and where and when you will be returning. A search really can't be on a one day hike. You would be repeating much of the same hike just getting up the mountain and then be left with not many hours in the day to search. You would need two or three days at a time, and in the summer or even late spring, this cannot be done because of the heat of our desert. You would not be able to carry enough water, so please, please be careful. I had many wonderful experiences with Kenny and will always remember them and have a place of love in my heart for him and the wonderful things we did together. I am healing from my loss and look forward to new experiences with desert hiking, camping, and taking beautiful pictures of our desert. Enjoy your adventures of life, and thank you for the kind and loving comments sent my way. Much love, Sharon. Liam could hear chittering in the dark. He couldn't discern what type of creature it was, and he jumped every time he dozed off finally giving up right before sunrise. Lack of sleep was going to make the rest of his hike miserable. After eating a couple more of the protein bars, he studied the map he had made and felt sure he was on track. The question was, would he be lucky enough to find the cave? It only took a couple of hours hiking to find his answer. If he hadn't been looking closely, he would have missed it. There was a rock ledge with several tiny caves, but none big enough to crawl inside, let alone walk. As he studied the area, he finally saw it, hidden by several rocks that looked like someone had put them there deliberately to hide the entrance. There was no way he could move these rocks alone. They were too large. He hadn't gone through all this trouble just to give up that easily. He had to at least try to clear the entrance, but he would have to be creative. Looking around, he found a huge stick, which was strange because there were no trees nearby. It looked like someone had left it there. He felt it was a little too random, but he wasn't about to question his luck. 
Taking the stick, Liam climbed on top of the ledge above the cave entrance and worked it behind one of the smaller rocks. With little effort, the rock gave way and rolled down the heap and onto the ground. Excitedly, he placed the stick behind the next rock, but before he could try to pry it free, the entire pile began to break loose and crumble. Within seconds, Liam was looking down at an opening large enough for him to crawl through. Jumping back down to grab his pack, he rummaged until he found his flashlight and then began to climb the pile of rocks to get a look inside the cave. Shining his light, he could immediately see that the cave progressively went down. The inside looked free of debris, and the ceiling looked solid, so he quickly made the decision that he was going in. It wasn't hard to climb down the other side into the cave, but he forgot to duck his head and banged it sharply on a jagged rock. With a hiss and a curse, Liam grabbed his head and immediately felt blood wetting his hair. It was a small trickle, so he should be okay. It didn't even really hurt after a couple of minutes. He tied the bandana that he had in his pocket around his head as a bandage and scooted his way down the rocks until he was touching the solid surface of the ground. The wind was making a whistling sound as it blew through the cave entrance, giving it a spooky ambience. Liam shivered as goosebumps prickled across his neck and scalp and ran down his arms. Shaking off the unnerving feeling, he grabbed his pack and made his way through the cave, shining his light around and ahead of him as he went. About 30 feet in, the cave made a turn towards the left, and Liam stumbled on something and began to fall. He managed to grab the wall to steady himself, but when his skin encountered the cold stone, an electric surge shot through his hand and reached through his entire body. Instantly reacting by pulling back his hand, he lost his balance and fell to the ground and landed on his knees. Liam looked at his hand, now covered in dirt, expecting to see burns or at least marks left from the shock, but there was nothing. He was trying to understand what had just happened, but his head felt like it was swimming, and he could still feel his body shaking and tingling. He shook his head to try and rid himself of the feeling and was overcome by a wave of nausea. Liam began to get scared. What if he passed out? No one would ever find him here. He sat on the cave floor for a while, and slowly the nausea and uneasy feeling began to fade. When he felt sure it was gone, he slowly stood and used his light to see if he could find what had caused the surge. There was nothing there, just stone, wet from condensation. He thought about touching it again as a test, and then thought better of it. He didn't know if his body could handle another shock like that. Liam began to make his way further down the dark cave, now questioning his own intelligence, but too stubborn to give up. Another 20 feet in, the cave began to descend in what almost looked like stairs, except they were naturally occurring stones, but they really didn't look natural. Liam took slow steps, making sure that each stone was not loose. He couldn't risk a more severe injury. Twenty-four steps. That is what he counted before the ground leveled out again. With a sigh of relief, he waved the light around, scanning the walls and the path ahead of him. He found himself standing in a large cavern. Liam began to walk again, when his light caught a form moving in the darkness. He brought the light quickly back to the spot, and it was gone. He tried to tell himself that his eyes were playing tricks on him, but the hair standing on the back of his neck told him different. His sense of self-preservation finally overrode his stubborn determination to explore the cave, and he turned to head back the way he came. But before he could even take a step, a piercing sound shot through the cavern and brought him down to his knees again. Liam dropped his flashlight, covered his ears, and began to scream. He thought surely his eardrums would burst. The sound seemed to be invading his entire body, and it continued until Liam blacked out and landed with a heavy thud in the dirt. Crickets. That is what he thought he was hearing, but he was wrong. When he opened his eyes, he thought he must be blind, because it was so dark, but ever so slowly he began to make out his surroundings. Liam was in a room, a very dark room, with machines or computers. He wasn't sure which. 
but they were making the chirping noises that he had thought were crickets. He tried to sit up, but was met with resistance. He was restrained and lying on a cold, hard surface. He tried to yell for help, but he choked because his throat was so dry. Instead, he just made a deep croaking sound, but it was enough to get the attention of his captor. Liam hadn't noticed it before, the form standing on the other side of the room. When he moved, he thought it was a man, but he couldn't tell for sure. It had to be a man. What else could it be? It began to walk towards him. It had two legs like a man, but it was not proportioned correctly. Liam thought the bump on his head must have been worse than he realized. He watched as this being walked over to his side and looked down at him. He realized now that it was wearing a full body suit, like you see scientists wear in the labs in the CDC. It was a man, or a woman, it had to be. He could see that now. That is what he was telling himself, until he got a good full look into their face. A year has gone by since Liam took his hike into the Mojave Desert. No one has seen him. No one has heard from him. They found his Jeep, but not one trace of Liam. His disappearance didn't even make the headlines because it is so common for people to go missing out there in the vast, dry, hot Mojave Desert. Thank you for listening to Freaky Folklore, the podcast about mankind's horrifying legends and myths. Don't forget to follow Freaky Folklore on Spotify and iTunes. If you can, leave the show an honest review on iTunes to help us grow. Freaky Folklore is part of the EerieCast Podcast Network, the home for listeners who love to feel scared. Go to EerieCast.com to find other terrifying podcasts such as Unexplained Encounters and Redwood Bureau. If you would like to submit an encounter or suggestions for future episodes, you can email them to carmencarrion at gmail.com. You can also follow me on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook for information on future episodes. Tune in next week as we discuss The Crooked Man. Is it an innocent nursery rhyme or a real-life nightmare come true?